Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Now we made it through all the inputs on Garage Ed, so it's time to switch gears and talk about the outputs. And the first one we want to look at is a fuel injector. That's one of the biggest players out there. Now our fuel injectors are right here, and I can show them to you in action, which is really cool. You can actually see the injectors pulsing. It's with pulse with modulation. I come over here, I give it some gas, bam, fuel starts flowing even more. Now, how does that all work? Well, true Tech Garage fashion, we had to slice one right in half. Check this out. Look at this injector inside of here. This is pretty cool. You can actually see the wire windings on both sides that with the magnetic induction actually pulls up this pintle right here. I can actually pull the pintle out. That's the little guy in there that goes up and down to allow the fuel to either come through it or stop the fuel. If it's down, we're blocked. If it's pulled up, it's allowed to go through it. And with spring pressure, it's kept closed. A cutaway injector. How does it all work? Well, it's all about that pulse width modulation. And take a look at this graphic. You see the top one there? The injector is only on 5% of the time. That means that the computer sense and hey it's a rich condition the middle one well that's 50 50 probably that 14.7 that stoichiometric number he's pretty happy there the bottom one though that's 90 percent on time that would be a massively lean condition and that computer's dumping fuel in now these injectors a couple of tests you can make super simple the first one i like to make is just take a stethoscope these are inexpensive i got this at rockauto.com come over here come over to the actual sensor itself and then what i'm going to do is put it on and i'm going to fire it up and when I fire it up, I'm gonna listen for a minute here. So there it goes. Yep, see I can hear it ticking. That doesn't mean the fuel's flowing through it, but at least it's ticking, I know I'm getting a signal to it. If I wasn't getting a signal to it, well I can check it with a Noid light. Also got that set at rockauto.com. They got some cool tools there as well. I take that up there, take this Noid light, which is gonna substitute the injector and not do any damage to the system. I'm gonna fire it up can actually see it pulse. Well, what is that telling me? That's telling me the computer's working, the wire harness is working, I have a problem down in the injector. Now, those are some cool tests you can run, but you know what? There's even one more. Brian's checking it out. Yes, and that test is for resistance. What we're checking is for the windings, essentially the copper, inside every fuel injector to make sure we have the proper amount of resistance so we have proper functionality. Every vehicle manufacturer has different specs. In this case, 13 and a half to 17 and a half ohms of resistance means we're good. We'll have to do that all the way around, but we're starting here. Now, you may not think the extra 10 or 15 minutes is worth it to make yourself up a little harness like this, but trust me, it's a game changer so you can get a good reading on everything. Uncle John made this one. He probably won't let me forget it, and I'll probably have to buy him lunch, but I'm glad he did. So we're pre-connected. I'm gonna turn my multimeter to ohms of resistance. 13 and a half to 17 and a half, and we're at 14 and a half. So this injector looks good. Now for more tech tips, Tom and John have some great information. Well, we just took a good look at a fuel injector. Tom, that's kind of the heart of the system on the outputs, but it's part of a system, the key word being system. Right, you need to look upstream and downstream to see if other parts are equally likely to be worn out or other parts might be failing and contributing to why that part failed. Um, something that's changed in the last decade or so is cars don't have separate fuel filters very often anymore. They'll just have a, a fuel strainer attached to the, uh, the fuel pump assembly in the, in the fuel tank. Some of them have, have more than one if the uh, fuel tank is, is U-shaped. So that if that strainer is clogged up, it prevents flow of fuel to the fuel injector and, and that can contribute to the death of the fuel injector. Yeah, that's uh, big amp draws, that's a problem. Fuel pump and everything, so sure. Right, so something we, we try to do at rockauto.com is, is when we know parts are, are need to be replaced together, we, we have come up with kits. Um, the manufacturers come up with assemblies where they'll, they'll include everything that's likely to fail, but we, we come up with kits. Here's an example of a front end kit that includes uh, all the bushings, all the control arms and everything, so you're not putting uh, mixing old parts and new parts. You wanna put a new part on the worn out part. No doubt, yeah, and if you ever tried to push a bearing in or bushing in or one of these actual joints in there, you're gonna wish you had the kit. Check them out online. Well, let's check in with Brian and finish up today's show.